Welcome to Tom's Tokyo Hall, where we look at all the stuff that I've picked up in uh, either the Tokyo Disney Resort in Tokyo, Japan, or I know it says Tokyo Hall, but we do also have some stuff from Universal Studios Japan in Osaka, which is not in Tokyo. So maybe we should change the name of the show. I don't know. We'll figure it out down the line. But uh, we're now here on the, we're going to be now on the WWNT TV channel. Thank you for joining us here. And I'm just going to show off all this. They have the best merchandise in Japan. But, and the same goes for Universal. Their stuff is just better than the U.S. parks in every way. It's all amazing. And I got to show it off. So that's what we're going to do on this show. And uh, let's get started. We're going to start with, well, we'll start with the thing I'm actually using to drink stuff out of. Might as well. And that is my uh, Believe Sea of Dreams cup. It's a metal cup for Believe Sea of Dreams. There's uh, Mickey and Minnie as they appear on the uh, pirate ship towards the end of the show. And then on the other side, we've got the Believe Sea of Dreams logo with Tokyo Disney Sea. It's got this cool, uh, it's kind of sparkly and it goes from blue to purple. So it goes up the cup and it's metal and it keeps the drink cold and it's great. I love it, I've been using it a lot. But let's get started with this this popcorn bucket that was available for a hot minute and then hasn't been. <laughs> I think it is, I think it's coming back though. But they had a lot of problems with it. Apparently like the paint was coming off this present and we had some problems with the clasp up here. So I'm never opening this bucket again because of that. We're just gonna leave it there. Uh, and uh, of course they've done tree buckets before at the U.S. parks. This is actually completely different. I know it'd be real easy to be like, oh, let's just order theirs and make the, paint another color. Tokyo actually redid the whole thing. So this is the first one that actually is a tree with like uh, detailed uh, bits. It's not just flat. There's some ornaments sticking out. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. Doesn't light up uh, like the U.S. one, but it is, I mean, it's obviously very cool. And there's Mickey, he's got a present. And then this, this open, I think we probably gotta put this on the super zoom maybe to show you what, what goes on here. Cause this opens, this will probably be the last time I ever open this knowing that the paint comes off. And there's some, there's some stuff in there in the little present. It's very cute. And has a strap that says Wishing you a magical Christmas full of joy and happiness. Isn't that sweet? That's, that's the bucket. All right, we've got a lot of big stuff. It's all piled here, if you couldn't tell. This is one of my favorite items I have ever seen. So in Toontown, uh, which now only exists in uh, Tokyo Disneyland and uh, in Anaheim, the original one, um, the manhole covers or, or tune holes. Tune hole is also what I call people in the park. So, you know, it's not, it, you know, kids can hear it. It's all right. Uh, but this is, this is a rug of the tune hole cover, which I think is the cutest thing. And the, I don't know if we want to go to the, you go to the zoom just to show the, the detail on that. It's like a bath, I guess a bath rug. Um, can't be a bath mat for us Americans. We're too big. Like this wouldn't, one, one leg would drip onto this and then the rest of my body would be dripping onto the floor. So, um, but I had to own this. I mean, it's, it's a replica of a thing in a park, a prop as a rug. That doesn't happen very often. Just thought that was so cool. All right. We got a lot of pillows. Let's do the pillows. I don't know why I bought this. I mean, it's obviously very cute. It's the small world clock face. It's, oh, it's too, <laughs> no, it's try to sleep. Try to sleep looking at that, everybody. Um, big furry small world clock face. Um, it's kind of shaped like, it kind of looks like a weird Mary Blair macaron, I think. <laughs> Cause it's got like the cream, but it's Mary Blair style and then there's the two the two cookies right um but it's part of the happiness everywhere line which is actually the same line uh, that rug is from they've been doing a lot of this stuff it's all really park-centric homewares or housewares 
um, and they all fall under this, under this, and it's just, it's weird because it's not like them to continue to keep updating a line over and over and over, and I think they've done an ungodly number of waves in this line thus far, um, but I'm happy about it because it just every time they just put out something really fun and, again, park-centric stuff that we probably won't ever get here at the U.S. Park. Spencer's giving out prices in the chat. I did bring a lot home. You were supposed to mail more stuff. I was supposed to have more stuff here. He didn't mail my stuff, Spencer. <laughs> All right, let's get this monstrosity out of the way, shall we? Oh, man. So this is a toy block. What letters are on here? So this is from the Toy Story Hotel, which opened this year at uh, Tokyo Disney Resort. We have a full tour, we have a room tour, all this stuff um, available right here. Um, actually, it's on the other, the WW News Today YouTube channel. And on TikTok, this has, this is one of our most, uh, all the Toy Story Hotel TikToks we did. Some of the most watched we've ever done. I'm trying to figure out if there's a rhyme or reason to what letters are on here. Is it story? I see S, there's a T. Yeah, so story, S-T-O-R-Y, is on here and then one side has Tokyo Disney Resort Toy Story Hotel, which I liked, I thought it was very cute. I liked it more than I thought I would. And, um, but it's not just a big beanbag pillow, of course. It's not all it is. We open the zipper here. Gotta reach inside. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be a process. It's gonna take a couple moments to do this, but we're gonna do it. All right, and then what you gotta do is hold it so that the beans, the beans have to transfer to the other side. <laughs> Oh, I don't, I kind of don't want to stuff the tag in. I don't want to damage the tag on this. Cause of course you buy pillows not to use them, but to display with their tags on. I will, I, there is actually a pillow here I'm going to use. I bought, there's a, there's a couple of pillows I bought to actually use at home. Well, you get the idea. I can't finish it at this point, but this won't be here. Picture, so just imagine, imagine that's not there. And it makes the Luxo ball. I thought this was, I thought this was neat. So I got it. Okay. We tried. So pillows I actually use, it's, it's a Mickey balloon. Um, so the story on this is uh, I'm doing my living room as all Tokyo stuff because like we have a bunch of display room here at the studio um, but obviously a, a good amount of our audience has not been to Japan and doesn't kind of doesn't know what some of the stuff is and the Tokyo stuff makes me very happy so I want to put it all over my living room so what I did for my sofa I have uh, they there was a light blue a baby blue version of this that we've uh, I think shown on the show before I have that I have the pink one, and those are on either side of the sofa. And then in, in the middle, it's a, it's a relatively long sofa. Uh, in between, I have the giant churro pillow, which has been um, on another episode as well. And uh, then I'm going to switch it out at Christmas time. I'm going to switch that out. I bought the chocolate churro pillow, which isn't here yet, Spencer. <laughs> I'm going to switch that out and have that at Christmas. But uh, I like these. I thought these were fun. I actually, I will take the tags off of these because they'll go on my sofa. Let's see. All right. Ooh. All right. More pillows. So um, it just wrapped up a couple weeks ago, but the uh, Disney Sea 20th anniversary uh, ended even though the 20th anniversary nighttime show has now begun. It's a long story, don't ask. Um, so here is the Aquasphere, which is at the entrance of the park in front of Hotel Miracosta. Uh, here is the Aquasphere. Uh, and then on this side is, these were the, the signs that were, um, there were several different ones with different characters. 
but the sign with Mickey that was out in front of, uh, attached to the fountain base of the aquasphere is represented here. The 20th logo is beneath it. The time to shine is up here. And then the rest is just legitimately the aquasphere. And what I love is if you look close, you could tell they went and like meticulously photographed the exterior of the aquasphere. And it is like a high res photo of the aquasphere that's printed onto this. And then this is all stitched on this Mickey. I thought this was neat to have the aquasphere as a pillow. I mean, it's the earth, but also the aquasphere. It just rolled all the way off set. Okay. <laughs> all right, it's time, it's time for Shandu. He's here, isn't he adorable? Uh, so, uh, I always have to explain this because people have no idea who this is. So, at Tokyo Disney Sea, uh, they have an original attraction. It opened as a, a sort of a scary Sinbad ride, which the Sinbad source material kind of is. You're fighting giant birds and, and there's a giant and oh, some mermaids want to kill you. And there's the whale that's, a, you think it's an island, but it's a whale and it throws your boat in the air. A lot of scary stuff and it was a really cool ride but then apparently like it i don't know in tokyo disney people expect a lot of cute not to say there's not scary attractions you know journey to center of the earth 20k have their moments um but they made it and they decided it would might do better as a cutesy ride and so they decided to make sinbad a good guy and give him in the spirit of you know all great disney attractions the, the he needed a very cute sidekick right um you think about uh figment ha dreamfinder had the fig had had the figment dreamfinder had figment um in later years lord henry mystic had albert and sinbad has shandu uh the tiger the little indian tiger cub that has uh his little hat his turban with the diamond in it and it's a very cute ride and then they had alan menken do the music which is unbelievable it is one of the greatest the greatest, oh, you want to call it an overlay, rehab, refurbishment, whatever they did. I mean, it already was a really great ride. Tons of animatronics, you know, no no expense spared. But then they made it into something that's like a true Disney classic and harkens back to a, a lost art of a, you know, 15-minute boat ride or 15-minute dark ride for that matter, which was a staple of... Um, you know, the 60s and F uh, all the way up through Epcot Center and even into the 90s. So anyway, now that we've got that all the, uh, out of the way, uh, here's Shandu with his banana. There's a whole scene where he's in a pile of bananas. So here they've made a banana pillow. It has his paw prints on it. And there he is. He's attached to it. And this was for the 21st anniversary. Every year at each park, they essentially, for the 20th, obviously the big anniversary, they don't do it, but those little in-between anniversaries. So... 21, 22, 23, 24, they'll pick essentially a land in the park, in the case of Disney Sea, a port. Um, and for the 21st anniversary at Disney Sea, they chose Arabian Coast and kind of focused somewhat on uh, Shandu, which is great because it means he will live, he will live very long because he sells merchandise. So here he is with his very soft, it's super soft banana pillow. Since we're talking about Chandu, here's a new item, relatively new. Uh, so also in the ride, there's a moment uh, where Chandu has found a box of gold. And of course, there's a tiger on the on the treasure chest, alluding to uh, Chandu's eventual, uh, you know, uh, claiming of it. Um, and so in the ride, actually, it's really cute. Uh, while Sinbad and the giant are sort of playing music, uh, Shandu's tail is sticking up and kind of just wagging occasionally out of this uh, box of gold. And uh, this treasure chest will appear in a lot of merchandise. It's kind of even maybe a little overplayed at this point. Um, but what I love, this is the cutest, the cutest instruction card I've ever seen. There's original art on this instruction card. Gotta show this. So the instruction card shows, trying to not be glary. Um, it shows that you can hide him and then pop him out. It's adorable. 
Uh, and so you, that's what you could do with the puppet. You could stick your hands in there, and you pull him down into the treasure chest, and he's hiding, and then pops, I mean, meant for a child's hand probably, but then he pops out. Hi, everybody. He's got a bell. How cute. I have like a Shandu shrine at home at this point. So much Shandu stuff. These are interesting. These are these are also part of that, that housewares line. Um, and I'm gonna try to explain what these are. Um, they're drawstring bags. They're pretty large, um, pretty pretty sturdy material drawstring bags of Fantasyland rides. And the reason this is truly ingenious is because when you make a drawstring bag, right, it kind of makes like a tent top uh, to the bag. And so they're like, hey, we have a couple of attractions that have like tent tops in Fantasyland. We should turn those into drawstring bags. And that's what they've done here. So, um, or, or they're rides in the round as well. Uh, so in this case, uh, we have the Mad Tea Party. So there's Mickey on the, ma or Alice's, what is it? Alice's teacups there. I forget the name in Japan. They're, for some reason, it's slightly different at every resort, and it's it's odd. Um, and you can see in the corner, we'll go to the super zoom for the corner shot. Uh, you can see there what it looks like when you actually open it and fill the bag. I mean, it's it's adorable. It's great. It, and it, I mean, it looks just like the ride in the park, which is why I, I had to own it. I love things where it's meticulously detailed recreations of things in the park. And then uh, they also did, they did Dumbo. Which, yes, they still have the original Disney World Dumbo. Um, that, that's what it looked like in 1971. It's what it looked like in 83 in Tokyo, and it has never been touched. It's still Timothy on the, t on the disco ball. And, um, but we'll go to the Zoom to show you what it looks like when you have the bag filled. How great. How great is that? Um, what I really love, actually, is the... Oh, this is an insane detail. You can see it here. The bottom of the bag is absolutely the floor underneath the Dumbos. It's the it's the floor underneath them. That's crazy. Is the Tea Party one something like that? Is it the is it the ride floor? I gotta see this now. No, the Tea Party one's just purple. So the Dumbo Dumbo is the more recent release. Tea Party was out a couple months ago. Dumbo's newer, so. They stepped it up a little bit. They made it even better. Of course they did. All right. We randomly have some Zootopia things. These are tiny plush keychains of Nick and June. How cute are they? Oh my God. They're so cute. Pudgy Nick and Judy's tiny keychain. Uh, I love that they made um, so I have several versions of this. Zootopia is one of my favorite Disney movies, so I happen to have a lot of Zootopia stuff. This has a tab that hasn't been pulled yet. Let's do it. For the sake of the video. All right, we pulled the tab. So it is, it's the carrot pen. There's some differences to this one, the carrot recorder pen. It's not actually a pen. It's a keychain. So there's a little embossed Nick and Judy at the top. See, there's our, our speaker and mic. Um, there's a play and record button on the side. Well, there's nothing to, well, I gotta turn it on first. So there's nothing to play yet. I assume the way it works is I hit record and I say something into the pen say something into the pen. Yeah, so it actually works, which is great. Uh, and then there is another interesting detail. This whole collection had 
a lot of little, uh, a lot of art of uh, Nick and Judy enjoying Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea. Um, so there's the little postcard of them riding Splash Mountain at Tokyo Disneyland, uh, attached to the keychain. There's very in-depth instructions, which seem like a lot given how little this does, but it's also very Japan. All right, turn it off. There we go. There we go. Oh, I gotta put it back in its bag. Alice's Tea Party. Alice's Tea Party is the tea party in Japan. It's, they're all different. I think it's Mad Hatter's Tea Cups in Paris. They're all, all, for no reason. For no real reason, they're different. Okay. These will take a little bit of explaining. Okay. So, um... As a benefit to resort guests, uh, there is some there is some resort merchandise where if you just you go to the resort, you can buy it even if you're not staying there. There is at least uh, usually a, a little line of stuff usually related to plush um, that is only available if you stay at the hotel. Weirdly enough, the Toy Story Hotel and Celebration Hotel are the two where they haven't done this, um, but all the other hotels, they've done it. Um, first time I ever stayed at Hotel Miracosta, they, they, there was a big plush set in a drawstring bag. It was super expensive. It was over $100, um, but they're gorgeous, and it's them in their costumes that are exclusive to the hotel, meticulously detailed costumes. The drawstring bag is even really nicely made. Um, Eventually, because so many years had passed, they decided it's probably time to update these now. And so instead they were like, well, let's do them in the plush, what they call the plush badge size. Um, but still again, in their, their costumes for each of the hotels, right? Um, so the first pair we have, I, I finally got to stay at the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel. And so here's Mickey and Minnie near Tokyo Disneyland Hotel. Outfits, of course, that's near the entrance of uh, Tokyo Disneyland, just, you know, which world bizarre areas, essentially Main Street. So the hotel has this, this interesting mixture of Main Street, USA, and World Bazaar meets uh, the Grand Floridian. There, there are some architectural elements definitely taken from the Grand Floridian, and it even gave some back. Um, around the time they were developing the hotel, they, they kicked some of the, the marble floor designs and stuff got, got reutilized um, at the Grand. Uh, but here they are in their, their cute little costumes. And on the feet, it says Tok the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel logo is there. And there's so much detail in the costume that the stitch work, everything is, is really very nice. They are on the expensive side. I forget how much they are, but... Um, and they don't actually say because there's always, it's funny, they don't actually put a price on them. There's always just a little sign at the hotels. And it's like the only thing that has a sign with a price instead of just a tag on it. Um, but for those of you who are new to the Tokyo stuff, plush badge, usually wear on a backpack or something. Um, and so in order to make sure you don't lose it, there are two sorts of attachments. There's, uh, we've got the like keychain essentially. Uh, and then also a, a pin. So you double attach and make sure you don't lose it. And even then, sometimes people still, they still come off the bag. I never wear them. It, I know it's you're supposed to, but um, I just think they're always really cute plush. I like to keep them that way. And then the other hotel we have is the Ambassador, which is near, uh, it's, it's in Xperi, which is their version of downtown Disney or Disney Springs. It's very Art Deco Hollywood. Um, and so their costumes reflect that a bit with uh, just all blue and white. Golden age of Hollywood, essentially. They're very cute. Really adorable. And the, the Disney Ambassador Hotel logo gonna be on their feet. So of course I stayed at both of those for the first time. I was like, I gotta, I gotta get the plush. So now I gotta stay at Miracosta again to complete the set of these because that's how insane I am. Well, let's get this out of the way. 
this this used to house churro snacks. Uh, they do t so. In fairness, a lot of what they call omiyagi uh, in in Japanese culture, it is sort of expected if you go somewhere, you bring people back tiny food gifts, uh, and so uh, there are whole stores at Tokyo Disney Resort, whole giant stores that carry this kind of stuff, and especially at the end of the night, packed, and maybe something more packed than like the Emporium store will be. Um, and sometimes these, a lot of this stuff is really great. The churro snacks are not my favorite. They're real hard. They don't really taste like churro. They just look like the Mickey churros from, from Tokyo. What is amazing about this is this is the actual wrapper that's on the chocolate churro, which is a Christmas thing. It has been a Christmas thing for several years in Japan. Um, and so this is the wrapper, this part. Yes, the box does come out of this this fake wrapper that has the characters on it. And yeah, so the food was in this churro box. It's kind of why I bought it. Also, I wanted to try them because I was just curious if the chocolate churro snacks would be better than the regular ones. There's plenty of other weird omiyagi or food gifts they sell, which I will recommend. The churro snacks are not are not one of them. Don't don't bother. That being said, I've bought both because the other one, the regular churro snack, comes in the it's in the truck. In world in the world bazaar area, there's a truck that sells Mickey churros. The box for the other ones is the truck, so I had to own it. Also, I wanted to try them. I had to see if I liked them. All right, I think we've got Mickey Mouse's birthday, 2022. We've got a bunch of stuff for that. So let's start talking about that stuff. Of course, there is a Tomika, the Tomi diecast car. You probably heard of Tomi. They've, they've sold plenty of Tomi stuff here in the US over the years. Um, not the most popular brand here, but obviously in Japan, um, you know, essentially as popular as Hot Wheels and Matchbox have ever been is how popular Tomi is over there. Uh, and they started doing not only did I mean obviously they always do like really detailed ride vehicles and stuff this is Mickey's car but now they've actually started making them where they have um, little figures of characters that get in them and so here's Mickey in his car but this is the special birthday Mickey's birthday 2022 version of that and so the box will display all the different angles of what that'll look like if you opened it not that I ever open these because I don't Okay. Also part of this collection, there is a plush badge of Mickey. I just love the colors. I don't know, the, this like pastel blue and the bright red and the yellow bow. I don't know, something about this spoke to me. I like that he has this hat. You can, the fun thing you could do, a lot of them had it like this. You could sort of pop the hat onto one ear so he's kind of wearing it. You could pop it off and his, the jacket's shiny. He's got the, on the, uh, on the keychain, there's a whole banner that says, uh, happy birthday, Mickey Mouse 2022. They do a birthday line for Mickey every year. People gobble it up, but they always come up with something new and cute every year. I bought this just because it was so odd. It's a, it's a weird, tiny Mickey top hat. Obviously, it's based on the hat he has here. This one has tiny mouse ears and uh, you can wear it if you want. I just thought it was weird and cool, and I had to have one. All right, now we have, so in August, it was my birthday, and so I had to buy birthday stuff. So at the U.S. parks, obviously, they'll, they'll give you a birthday button, right? They don't give away birthday buttons um, in Japan. I think there's a birthday sticker. I know there's a first visit sticker. I don't know what the other stickers are. Spencer can tell us. I don't know if there's even a birthday sticker. Maybe there is. Um, I don't remember. 
Uh, but there is a the birthday button is a thing they sell, and it's Disney happiest birthdays, Tokyo Disney Resort. Um, I like that they have a year on it, so every year you could sort of collect it, right? Um, and I mean, it's nicer than a regular button. So not only is it a button, it's got all of this going on. It's got this hard plastic back. It has, again, uh, you can hang it from something with these little gold hooks. There's a there's back as you might expect. Um, and then the ultimate, the ultimate Japan thing is if none of that works for you, um, you could hook these gold things to this and wear your button on a lanyard because that's totally normal, right? What's weird about wearing a birthday button on a lanyard? What I was really excited about though was um, they don't make a lot of shirts in larger sizes, um, but this one and sizes obviously run very differently there. Um, so I'm about, in, an, in a t-shirt, I'm about an XL, somewhere between XL and the 2X in the US. Um, at Tokyo Disney Resort, I fall under what would be 3L. And uh, they do have a My Happiest Birthday shirt in 3L. So this is one of the few TDR shirts I own that I can actually wear. Not that I've worn it, it still has a tag on it. But My Happiest Birthday, I love the back. But who's who's back there? Daisy and Donald with a, like a stack of presents back there. It's an adorable, adorable shirt. Love it. The first time I ever got to spend my birthday there. Celebrate it. Um, along the same lines, I guess, I don't know why Spencer bought this. I don't know the, why I asked for this, but um, this is, it looks like it's a towel. Definitely a Disney Happiest Birthday 2016 towel it doesn't look that exciting but i don't know why i bought this. is there a reason spencer that i bought this i don't know yeah so he said the stickers are birthday first visit and first ride for little ones oh man i need a first ride one i don't have that first ride i'm trying to see if there's anything special about this or he just bought this at random He bought this at random. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing really wildly interesting about this towel. But I don't know how many people could say they have a birthday towel. It's pretty weird. Now to figure out how this was folded, I'll never figure this out again. <laughs> hmm. No. Maybe. That seems too wide. That's why I didn't want to open it. I knew I was like, I'll never figure this out again. Or did I? I kind of did. How did someone get this in here so meticulously? No, I got close though. It's not quite right. So speaking of resort merchandise, anyone can buy. They did a whole new line of these little drawstring bags uh, for each of the hotels. So I'll just figure out, is this camera a little too? Oh, this one's fine. So here's Hotel Miracosta. There's uh, the characters um, sailing out of the port Mediterranean Harbor. One of the arches from the hotel in the shot. I think it's the same on both sides, yeah. What's neat about these is the, the little charm. The charms are just incredible. They're, they're, they're pretty heavy, they're metal, and they're gorgeous. So there's the M, the Miracosta M icon. It kind of makes these, these little icon uh, charms. So here's the, uh, here's the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel with all the characters, their period specific clothing. You can see the look of the building. Yeah, it's a little bit Grand Floridian, a little bit Main Street, 
Um, it's a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting take on it. Um, yeah. Which I guess the, the Paris one kind of was too, the Paris Disneyland Hotel. I mean, now who knows what it's going to be, but, uh, and there is the, uh, the TDH icon. And it says on the back of that Tokyo Disney Resort. Last but not least, the ambassador. There's all that Art Deco. Got a, a, a car, a train, a plane. The hotel's at the top of that. And then the ambassador, I, I love, this one really stands out, this silver, this silver Mickey. The silver Art Deco 1930s Mickey. So I bought this for my mother for Christmas. Um, they have something called Fluffy Plushy, I think is the name. Yeah, Fluffy Plushy. Uh, they are the, they're always, it's a line of just the absolute softest plush you've ever felt they're just so soft and i mean obviously beyond that look at look at the it just it looks like nana it's like she left out of the movie um it looks so much better than i know they did one a couple years ago i almost bought it um there was a whole line of peter pan plush from disney store in america and i was just like i don't like she's she doesn't feel that soft the face doesn't look right i that stuff bothers me for sure um and so uh, from the time I was very young, every time we rode Peter Pan, my mother would always tell me to wave goodbye to Nana. And so, um, because of that, I thought it would be adorable to get her a plush Nana. And a fluffy plush, they're just so soft. They're so soft, man. I love them. What other ones do I have? There's a, there's a Shandu one. I have the Shandu, which is also the best Shandu one, I think. Um, Winnie the Pooh. Miko, I actually, I, I gotta buy the Miko next time. I didn't have room for it this time. Oh, speaking of Shandu, I found another Shandu thing. This is a Shandu Magic, the stop and go. And again, he's with bananas. Like he's, he's, he's one of two things these days, right? He's either in that treasure chest or he's got bananas. That's, that's all, that's all they think of him. <laughs> but this is the thing where it's on a, I'll show you the instructions on the back. It's on a rope. So they have, a, they still have magic shops, right? So. World Bazaar still has a magic shop and they produce very much exclusive magic shop merchandise. It's not, there's not a lot of like, you'll find it anywhere, magic shop stuff in there. It's actually all Tokyo Disney branded and exclusive and they put new stuff out all the time. And because one, the magic shop in Disney Sea is the Shandu store. It's the store in the middle of Arabian coast. Shandu gets to be on this stuff sometime, usually more so Genie, this stuff, They've done from opening to now a lot of genie, but Shandu will end up on some of this stuff too. And this is a thing where he goes up and down a rope and you can make him mysteriously stop on the rope, but then also he'll just go. And somehow you control that from the ends of the rope and not from the figure. Uh, but it's, it's beyond that, it's this beautifully crafted figure of Shandu. It looks like he just popped out of the ride. Uh, the packaging's great, everything about it. Everything about it's absolutely phenomenal. All right, we got some other semi-generic things. They don't fit a category, really. Um, I love the Great American Waffle Company, which is in World Bazaar. Best place to get a waffle. This is just a little, a little pouch, a little bag, like a makeup case, essentially. Uh, and it has, I love this rubber, this rubber Mickey waffle up here. And uh, this, so this is the sign including the waffles, it's a big cast iron sign. Um, this is like the marquee sign, and then there's a hanging sign beyond that that has the wa the Mickey waffle. Um, it's great, and they've just the best waffles. What's also weird here is that even though Disney Sea does not have the Great American Waffle Company, there's like a wrought iron version of the Aquasphere. Obviously the castle makes sense because it's in that park, but nonetheless. This, I don't know why, I think this is one of the greatest items in the history 
of Disney theme parks. I just, I love, I can't begin to count the ways I love this. These are sandwich flags, but they're sandwich flags featuring logos, right? So I don't know, maybe the super zoom's a little better for this to show the detail on these. Um, so starting on the left is like the super duper old original Tokyo Disneyland logo, right? It's the, it's the D with the castle in it. And then you have obviously the still pretty much the original logo as well. The Tokyo Disneyland one next to it, but that they still use then Mickey and Minnie and then the Disney sea logo and then the Tokyo Disney resort logo. So it's like all the logos through time and Mickey and Minnie and their sandwich flags, but obviously you don't have to use them for that, but they're, they're hard plastic. I just think this is such a cool item. And I think if you did this with like all the Disney World Park logos, people would freak. I think people would actually buy it. Uh, this is a towel set themed to the Disney Resort line, the monorail. Um, so one towel is a monorail and the other towel are the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's too early for this. Um, what do you call those on a train? Grips? Not grips. Do you call it a grip? I feel like there's another word for it. Handle? I feel like there's an actual term and I'm blanking on it. Um, but yeah, there's these handles hanging up there so you could stand and, and ride the monorail. Um, they're Mickey shaped. That's what they look like with the little pants thing above them. And uh, that's what their monorail, their monorail has Mickey shaped windows. It's great. And it runs on a schedule. It's magical. It's never broken. It's also never broken. This is a license plate of the Tokyo Disneyland hand straps. Yeah, sure. I mean, I just feel like there was a more official term, like you can ride the subway in New York than that hand strap. It, just, it still feels wrong. I don't know why. It might just be early. So it's the Tokyo Disneyland welcome sign as a license plate. Um, I also love that the little holes are Mickey's. Um, but this is the sign that's at the entrance of uh, Tokyo Disneyland into World Bazaar with the brick that's even behind it. And it is, again, part of that happiness everywhere line, which just everything out of that line is just fantabulous, which I don't even know if I've ever used that word in my life, but if anything deserved it. Okay. I'm not going to get to use this now because... Uh, 2022 is over and I just opened the box and it's my 2022 wall calendar. <laughs> we have to open this though. The reason I collect these anyway, because the art, it's the only thing, although there is another item now, it's usually the only item that has this, all of this art. And instead of what we do in the US is like, oh, the, the press photos essentially, like really, really pretty stock photos the Disney parks are not shot specifically for a calendar, um, which is kind of sad. What they do is artists actually make 12 original pieces of art and they're always the most gorgeous pieces and they're park specific. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna go month by month through this cause we have to. Okay. Uh, January, it was the new year, and it was the year of the tiger. You probably saw in a previous haul, we, un, we there was merchandise with this art. This is a rarity where there was actually a calendar page with art that made it on other merchandise, and this is it. Um, and Shandu made it this year because it's the year of the tiger, but also Tigger, uh, Raja, and Sheer Khan got in on the fun as well. I love this crazy, the crazy sticker sheet is here, isn't it? Yeah. So there's this crazy sticker sheet so you can mark dates and stuff. And uh, so there are sticker versions of the calendar of each month, but then there's all these little icons. There's little cars and luggage and Mickey glasses and the castle in Disney Sea. So you can mark when you're going to Disneyland or Disney Sea, um, fork and knife, all sorts of adorable little icons. 
Let's look at February. This is the first time I'm looking at a lot of this. Look at that. Minnie and Daisy in Toontown at Minnie's house. It's a cute one. Oh, and Clarice. I didn't even see Clarice because I'm looking at it through the, the camera over here. Clarice in there too. Yeah, Clarice is a big deal there. All right, and I'm spoiling. Is that the next page or is that March? Yeah. This is, is this the Miracosta, like the hallway to the wedding chapel? I think I'm looking at it upside down, which is making it hard. I think that's what it is. Spencer can tell me if it's not. I assume that's what it is. Mickey and Minnie in this hallway. I don't know, I don't really recognize the fountain outside, but it, it looks like it might be something in Miracosta. It's not the big fountain out front, or is it? Maybe it is. Oh, it is the big fountain out front. It's just, it's so hazy and there's so much light coming in. So that is, that is Miracosta. And I think that that's where that hallway goes. Yep, I absolutely, I got it proud of myself. I don't think I've even been in that hallway. I just kind of figured it out. Oh, I don't, that one excites me, but we're not there yet. This one is just, oh, just them having fun at Tokyo Disneyland. They're just in the hub or the plot. I think it's plot, the plaza there. Um, the big turret, Chip and Dale are in Mickey's backpack, goofy ash churros. Is there anything else fun going? They're meeting up with Daisy and Minnie. Oh, Donald's got popcorn. I wonder what flavor he got. Also cherry blossoms, because it's April. And cherry blossoms are in bloom. Could be in March, you never know. Somewhere in March or April, it always happens. I don't even know where to begin with this. So I love 20,000 Leagues, always have. They have a 20,000 Leagues ride, which is one of my favorite rides on this planet. Um, there is an insane detail here. So for the 35th anniversary, they did 35 Mickey statues around the parks, both parks. One of them was in Mysterious Island, and it was Mickey in this diving suit. This is the diving suit with the weird glass, obviously because has, Mickey has this big pointy snout, right? Um, so this is this is absolutely that statue. It's Mickey in that suit again from 2018. But now they've also drawn suits for Goofy and Donald, which also have the long snout. These, I, I would buy anything with Mickey and the gang in these like Jules Verne-esque diving suits. The Nautilus, of course, is uh, in the background here. There's all the sunken ships as well. The ride vehicle's gotta be in here, right? Or did they not go that far? Did they actually not go that far to do the ride vehicle with the tiny sub? They actually didn't, I'm surprised. They do have flashlights though, which is a big component of the ride. There's a portion where flashlights turn on and you aim them to find stuff. And similar to that, there is like an octopus with the ship's wheel right out of the ride. I love it, I love it. I would, I would buy anything with that art. June, uh, Camp Woodchuck. This is great. This is, they have this faux fire pit uh, out in the back of the seating area of the restaurant up against the path that leads to the queue for the uh, Donald and Daisy meet and greets. So Camp Woodchuck is in kind of in Frontierland, uh, sorry, Western land at uh, D Tokyo Disneyland. Um, and it was built in recent years and it's this restaurant, it's all themed very much to the Donald Duck uh, and, and his nephews, the shorts they're in, and also um, the, the, the Carl Bark stuff, the comics, the comic strip, all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of references to a lot of weird old Disney things. Um, it is like a fanboy's dream, that area. And so this has all the banners and stuff. One of my favorite things, if you've ever seen the episode of the new DuckTales, where they have the, the woodchucks, that is the restaurant. They literally, because they wanted it to tie in, 
modeled the building after the one at Tokyo Disneyland. So it is bit by bit, every single part of it is little details that are in the one in the land. Uh, in, in Camp Woodchuck at Tokyo Disneyland, which is, I, I lost it when I saw that episode. Yeah, like spike the bees on a, on a banner even there. Oh, we finally got Duffy and Friends for July, but the disrespect, Gelatoni is not even on here. The disrespect. So it's the, obviously they've got some newer Duffy friends, right? So they got to promote those. So Duffy's here. Shelly May didn't even make it. Um, but Cookie Ann and Olu Mel have made the cut. It's the summer in Cape Cod. There's the lighthouse. Cape Cod, part of American Waterfront at uh, Disney Sea. That's where Duffy and Shelley may originate from Cape Cod in their story. Oh, happy ride. Happy ride. It's the happy ride with Baymax. Everyone's having a good time. Even Mochi. Mochi the cat is being held by a Baymax. Um, Hero is... Uh, Hero... Hero's outside the ride. Hero missed, I guess, when his friends got in line. So Hero's just waving. Or maybe he's dancing, which is what people do outside the ride to the music. And Honey Lemon and all of them are riding. Go, go, Tamago. They're all... They're all on the ride. Okay. Uh, for September, we've got American Waterfront, the New York side. Uh, there's the SS Columbia, which is pretty much a full-size uh, steamliner that's just sitting there at uh, Disney Sea. It holds some restaurants and lounges and such. But um, yeah, this, so Mickey and friends are in their 1910s garb like they're in New York at the time. I see the, the big city vehicles in the background. It's Max, Goofy, what a group. Max, Goofy, Clarabelle, and Horace, and then Mickey and Minnie. I guess they're all getting ready to sail away on the Columbia. October. Wow. So this is going to be, it's essentially, uh, looks like a fall celebration in Mediterranean Harbor at Disney Sea. A lot of Disney Sea this year. I mean, did they actually even it out? One, two, three, four. Yeah, they did. It almost seemed like they didn't, but they did. It seemed like a lot of Disney Sea. Um, so they're in clothing of the time. Goofy is a candle maker who's making uh, uh, jack-o'-lanterns in this case and the, the Venetian gondola actually on his uh, jack-o'-lantern that's a ride you can ride there they have gondoliers who actually uh, you know guide you through the canals it's pretty neat and it is I mean it is pretty much that pretty at night it's a gorgeous area of the park Donald's fighting with Chippendale who've made a candle of him it's funny Oh, this is great. This is, uh, this is Pooh's Honey Hunt. This is the, the opening scene. Oh, the opening. I guess the page is the opening scene, but the scene after that, the scene where you're introduced to all the characters there in gorgeous audio animatronic form. And yeah, everything, yeah. So you have... Oh, no, but it looks like this is the version where I guess everything goes well. They, everyone's actually at a picnic and looking like they're having a fun time. This isn't, I guess it's not really Honey Hunt because things have gone well. <laughs> yeah. All right, one left. I'm sure it's always, a, there's always a Christmas one. Well, this is a, this is a choice. Uh, it's Small World, which for some of you is going to make sense because you're like, oh, Small World Holiday. Uh, they had Small World Holiday in Tokyo. They got rid of it, but they've done a Small World holiday page, so it's snowing at Small World. Mickey and Minnie are with all the children of the world. I think, I'm going to dare say Jared Moriyama did this art, because that looks like his Mickey and Minnie, but I might be wrong. Um, this is very cute. Maybe, I don't know, maybe pre-COVID they were thinking about bringing it back. 
it's not like them really to have a page that represents something that doesn't actually exist at the park. So I kind of wonder. I kind of wonder. But yeah, that's the calendar. Um, but I need to, I gotta show this again. Look at the word calendar up at the top and the fact that N is the Nautilus N. Was, was that also May? We gotta talk about this. These are in order. So I think they chose May simply because they knew they wanted to use the Nautilus N as the N, and these, of course, had to be in order. Why would they not be? I can't believe they did that. That's, that, it's an insane detail, even for them, even for them. Oh, we've got food. This is uh, the Christmas 2022 Holly Jolly Christmas Chocolate Crunch. Talked about Chocolate Crunch before. This is the Omiyagi that is my absolute favorite. I think it's just the best chocolate ever. I, I, chocolate there just is, I don't know. Um, other countries, even in Paris, you realize like we, America, we, we don't have great chocolate. Um, I think we put so much junk in it, but it's so much more pure. These other places, what it's supposed to be. Um, it's so good, it's just so good. Uh, what's interesting about this art is, um, so the tree they're decorating on this side, uh, this is the Disney Sea side, has a bunch of essentially park icons in the tree. There's some real obscure stuff. There's the weird, the weird fish submarine uh, from Port Discovery is there. The Columbia Mermaid Lagoon. Um, so much weird, cool stuff. Venetian Gondola, um, the Cape Cod Lighthouse. Unukiwa bun, it's a shrimp bun that looks like a life preserver they sell in the park. Um, the Aquasphere, a lot of cool stuff. And then on the other side, which is supposed to be Disneyland, the tree has the Chocolate Churro, Big Thunder, Cinderella Castle, Space Mountain, Small World Clock Face, uh, the Rose from Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast. But then you got to look at what's at the base of the tree on this side. There's a Nautilus. Uh, there is Figaro in the Hatbox, which is from Mini Style Studio, which is a relatively new addition. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff like that. And uh, this, this reference cannot be lost on us today, folks. Uh, there is a toy train at the bottom, and the nephews are riding in it. Uh, if you know anything about Toys for Tots, what we've told you, the original logo was a toy train very much in that style with Donald Duck riding it. This is absolutely a callback to that. So there is a Toys for Tots reference on this tin. Oh, Chip and Dale are in it. Sorry, I thought it was the nephews. Chip and Dale are in it, but I mean, it's absolutely the Toys for Tots train definitely is and i mean the art style of the characters on here is from that time too so um i forget what flavors we have in here i think we have is this dark chocolate i don't think that's milk chocolate i think it's dark chocolate white chocolate and strawberry and i'm gonna stop and have some chocolate crunch because i need i need some sugar and some energy this morning they're shaped like an, I don't know if I've ever show, shown the actual Choco Crunch on the show before. I don't know why they're shaped like half an egg. I don't know if Spencer knows the answer to that either. It's weird, but. It's so good. Man, I love this stuff. Let's have a white chocolate. Um, another crazy detail. The packaging is covered with stuff from the tin. So there's the stars, there's the ornaments, all that stuff is on these little wrappers, which certainly not a thing you have to do, right?
Oh, the white chocolate's good too. I mean, the dark chocolate's my favorite, I think. And you can tell because there's less of them left. I've already broken into these. I'm sorry, everyone. I couldn't wait. There's the dark chocolate. Spencer, why are they shaped like... He said no clue. They just are. It's got to be a connection to Donald because isn't the... The yellow tin is the original tin, right? Like that's the first one. I think it's supposed to be a duck egg. Not gonna lie, this looks like the makings of a guy in a van about to give cookies to kids. That's where you're wrong, Chris, because I don't share my chocolate crunch. No one else is getting any of my chocolate crunch. I, if Tokyo Disney Resort would like me to, I am happy to be essentially the face of chocolate crunch. I would love to be a character in the style of like, the cookie crisp guy or any of those where it's just me trying to keep my choco crunch from kids. I keep popping the lid off. I'm just gonna put this on the ground before I make it worse. I'd be happy to do a series of commercials where I'm trying to either steal choco crunch from people or I'm trying to keep my choco crunch away from them all of the Lucky Charms guy. I'm on board. So this is, um, this is a tin they sell all the time. Um, I finally bought this one in August because I, there was no seasonal one to buy in August. And I was like, I need to go home with Choco Crunch. I should try one of these ones I've never had. I also love the art on this tin. So here's the Disney Seaside uh, with Donald and Daisy. And then the Disneyland side uh, with Mickey and Minnie. And so this is milk and royal milk tea. So these are different flavors in this one. Um, they weren't my favorite, but I'm still glad I tried them finally. The Choco Crunch Cook, yeah. Also, like, it's a big thing. They, they really like to shorten names. So it's Chocolate Crunch, but everyone calls it Choco Crunch. That's, like, the cool thing to do there is they, they shortened it. So everyone just calls it Choco Crunch. Well, this is another thing. This is, um, I bought this again because the Nautilus was on the top. I didn't realize the Nautilus on the Choco Crunch. I probably wouldn't end up buying these. Um, it's still a really cute tin, but I didn't really need both of them. But that being said, this is a good example of the other Omiyagi stuff that they do and how the packaging is insane. There's two different snacks in here and two different packages. And this isn't even, the fact that there's two different packages is not even that weird. Um, I've had some Omiyagi stuff where nearly everything in the box was in a different package. Another crazy detail just under the lid, a part you'll only see when you lift the lid, here's the Mickey Garland from World Bazaar is up there. I'm gonna, I might as well, let's eat some more garbage, shall we? Here, I'm gonna pop this open. So this one is, uh, it's a chocolate Mickey cake. And this stuff is always good. It has no right to be as good as it is either. And then this is, I think this is just a sponge cake, this one. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little star sponge cake. Okay, we got Winnie the Pooh stuff. Let's do the Pooh stuff. Do all the Pooh stuff next. Okay, so I was excited that while I was there in November, there was a new line of Winnie the Pooh stuff uh, being released, and uh, it is very much from Pooh's Honey Hunt. 
they picked out a particular scene of Pooh's Honey Hunt, which is where Pooh falls asleep and dreams of the heffalumps and woozles. There's a very cool scene where it makes that transition. Uh, and they did, they did a whole line of housewares, I would say, called Pooh's Dreams. And so this side's not that, I mean, the Heffabee's on it, but then we have Pooh's bedroom. There's the window and the star field and the, hef the Heffalump balloon and Pooh. And even all, all of the stuff in the room that's actually there on the ride is there. We got this little mug. Uh, there is more. There is a, oh, this, these are all towels, but I got the, I got the towel with the art as the Pooh Dreams art. I also got this set of three towels, the Heffabee Pooh hanging from the Heffalump balloon. God, there's some cute stuff though. Here he is, yeah, hanging from the hanging from the balloon, but also there's the honey pot with legs. This is not from that line. This is from the Disney store a while ago. I think in August I got this. Um, there was a cute line. I love Eeyore's my favorite Pooh character. And there was this really cute keychain where it looks like Eeyore got caught by his tail on a balloon. And so, look at, look at that face. Look at that face. My goodness, he's so cute. And there he is, and so it's like he's getting lifted away. There he goes. Speaking of lift away, back to that Pooh Dream line, there's, again, these, this represents things that happen in the Honey Hunt ride. Um, so here's the Heffalump balloon. Uh, and what, what I love about this is um, they use the keychain um, to hook, so you can detach Pooh if you want, and they both could be separate keychains. Um, but also this way, it's the balloon is lifting Pooh away. <laughs> He's very small. Look at look how small he is. He fell over. But my favorite item that. I love the Heffa Bee. I've always thought that's cute. The only thing I like about the Disneyland Winnie the Pooh ride is there's the Heffa Bee like on the back of the vehicle. But there, I, to my knowledge, there's never been a plush Heffa Bee until today. And so it's, Pooh has been caught by the Heffa Bee with his honey. And this is, there. there is like a big Heffa Bee that sort of flies in a circle um, in the Heffalumps and Woozles scene in Honey Hunt. And uh, this represents that, but it's also, it's, I, I love this so much. It's so great. Um, there's little instructions. Oh, I didn't even realize. So the Heffa Bee can essentially steal the honey, which it does in the ride. And Pooh detaches, so you can have this separate little Winnie the Pooh, which I think is actually the very same one. Or are they a different size? They're a different size. That's weird. You would have thought it'd just be the same thing, but um, but he's got Velcro, so you can reattach him to his honey pot. He can try to save his honey pot from the half of bee. What makes Tokyo so special, I think, is it's this weird combination. Disney Sea is like the most beautiful park ever built. It's incredible. Um, and the Disneyland has some of the most amazing new rides as well, but it's then also sort of a museum of older stuff from other parks that don't exist anymore. But then also has some weird quirky stuff of its own. And one of those weird quirky things of its own is Pan Galactic Pizza Port in Tomorrowland, um, which is home to, of course, this alien pizza maker, Tony Solaroni, who if you haven't watched, Spencer, we have the video up, right? Of like the, the whole loop. Um, you should go watch it. It is the most 80s, most insane thing. He he suddenly starts speaking English and he sings he sings about making pizza 
and oh my god, I love it. And like, the, it's the cheesiest video. It's got this like '80s animation, and then there's a, these green screen bits that look as bad as like the stuff we do on News Tonight. Um, it's it's incredible. Um, but this is the little the little mystery figurine set. Um, sadly, I'm not going to open this one, but. Um, it has a trash can from the restaurant. It has, there's another box that'll have a pizza, a pizza box and a, it's the actual Tokyo Disney Resort soda cup, the medium size, not the big one. Uh, the Pan Galactic Pizza Port sign, Tony Solaroni. And then there's another one that comes with, it's the little folding carrying tray box with two of the calzones in it. And then the drink is, God, what is it? It's not a drink. It's the salad cup. It's the cup of salad. They made a toy figure of the cup of salad. I can't with them. They're they're insane. They're insane. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Could you imagine if like Disney World did little toys of like all the food items? All the ubiquitous food. Like imagine like a Disney chicken breast nugget. Like it's in the little boat and you could buy, like that would be adorable and amazing. I can't believe that the salad cup is, I love that the salad cup is a thing. How, how does this place exist? How does it exist? Got another mystery set. This, so I love this. So this is, uh, Duffy and Friends Sunny Fun. So in Cape Cod in the summer, um, there's a bunch of decor. There's a tiny fly in here. Uh, in Cape Cod in the summer, there is a bunch of really cute decor. Um, and these are mystery figures of the decor. So there's the Duffy Cactus, and there's the Statue of Tippy Blue, and there's the ukuleles. And then on this side, it's the... Uh, I forget what that is. I think it's a coat rack or something with the whale, with the characters with the whale. Uh, and then all the characters as uh, sand sculptures on a surfboard. And uh, Spencer could tell me what the mystery thing is. I don't know what the mystery thing is in this box offhand. But uh, these are all real, these are real decor that go up in the park in Cape Cod in the summer for this event. Um, which is why I needed to own it. I just thought it was it was super neat that they made the decor as as figures. Pan Glock the Pizza Port used to actually serve pizza. Now their menu is mostly calzone to differentiate from Captain Hook's galley. I mean, they still have pizza. I would dare say though, you're you're probably right in that like they sell more of the other stuff, right? I don't even think the calzone. I think most people go there and get the get the the little green men mochi more than anything, probably. Um, and then they always do the the cup the souvenir cup desserts always there. Bob was supposedly a merch guy. That doesn't mean you're good at merch. It just means you, you know. I don't know. The Tokyo Park stuff is just so park centric and so focused on the 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 park it is. They get it right. It rep it represents it represents the stuff you're visiting, which is what I want out of my merchandise. So here's why I think um, the Choco Crunch is an egg. So like the main tin is Donald, right? So that's so this is a magnet set of Choco Crunch containers. These are tiny versions of Choco Crunch and tomato snack containers as magnets. And there's the Donald one, which I think that's like the, that's the standard Choco Crunch, right? So the one, Spencer, correct me if I'm wrong, the Choco Crunch in the Mickey tube is not egg shaped. Um, so I think that, I think that explains the egg. Are these chopstick rests, these? Oh, these are chopstick rests. I'm sorry. I do have the magnet ones at home. These are chopstick rests. So you rest your chopsticks on these. And also the tomato soup snack, which is... The tin is so big, it's the only omiyagi thing I haven't bought and taken the tin home yet. I need to do it. But the, the tin is so big. It is giant. It would take up 
so much of my luggage. You don't have a full video of the show, Spencer? What are you doing with your life? Next time you go to TDL, I want... Uh, it's Mickey shape, right? I'm telling you, I figured it out. The egg is, it's supposed to be a duck egg. I'm telling you. I think I've solved it. They're baked chocolate. I gotta try those next time. I'm getting the tube. The tube and the tomato in April. I don't know, maybe there's gonna be too much 40th stuff. I may not be able to get Choco Crunch and tomato snacks home, but. The USJ is, the USJ Choco Crunch is vile though it's gross we we like couldn't even finish the super nintendo world choco crunch everyone hated it, it was star shaped in that case everyone hated it it sat in the there might even still be some in the cabinet that's how much everyone disliked it okay there was sweet sweet summer was the event in the summer this year, and by event, I mean there were some food items and some merchandise items, and that was pretty much it. Um, there is this adorable pin set, though. Mickey and Inner Tube and Chip and Dale. And then here's the button, or canned badge, as they'll refer to it. There was some cute stuff that I didn't buy, and there was a headband with uh, Chip and Dale on, like, big rubber ducks. Uh, there was some cute other stuff. So, up uh, our boy Shandu's back. Now he's in puzzle form. It, of course, it's the, the tiger chest. I told you, they just do this for everything. Uh, it's a puzzle, and it is the most adorable art of him on the puzzle. But, of course, the puzzle art is him with the bananas, because we can't do the chest again, because the chest is the box. So what else are we going to do? Well, there's several other Shandus in the right, but, oh, no. People only like banana shandu or uh, or treasure chest shandu. It wasn't expired. It wasn't expired when we got it. You sent it pretty shortly after. Also, expired chocolate when it's sealed doesn't really go bad unless it's way longer than that. If it's expired and it's bad, it turns color. None of it had turned color or anything. It was all perfectly fine. It was not that expired. I also think on, on that stuff, it's a best by date and not an expiration date, but. Okay, so this is gonna be hard to show. because this. So this is, there was a Toy Story line called Pop-Up and Beyond. So this is a tiny camera. It's not an actual camera. Mind you, it has slides. This is like very old school tchotchke um, where it pops between slides. I'm gonna try to show you. There's a little display of what the slides are here. I don't know how clear that's gonna be on your TV at home or your computer. Try to get the glare off. Um, so there's a quick look at the scenes, what they are, and I'll try to recap them for you in a second. Let's see. Yeah, the Choco Crunch was not that old, the Nintendo one. Spencer's being overdramatic. Uh, so it's all the characters riding past basically all of Tokyo Disney Resort. There's one with a, the monorails going by and Buzz and Rex are under cones. Um, there's one where three aliens are attempting to hold the churro and they're all stacked up to be the height of the churro. Uh, Woody is lifting weights. This is a photo op from Toontown with the big dumbbell and the rubber uh you know bar between them what he's doing that the one that made the reason i bought this is there's one where a little green man is pretending to be shiriki utundu from tower of terror so he has like the little staff and he's built his own base and he's he's shiriki utundu they're at the aquasphere and then them with a camera i again i really i really just bought it for the shriki alien also, I kind of like these tchotchke things. This is fun. So you hold it up to the light, and then the, the little thing is, the little vignette is illuminated, and you pop between scenes. These were a big thing when, when I was young. These were a big thing. The Viewmaster and all sorts of stuff like that. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're not doing great on time. I don't know if we're going to... We may not even get to the Universal stuff. I don't know. There's so much stuff. See how fast I can make it through all this. Okay. Um, 
if you think souvenir pennies, if you think there's a lot of them at Disney World, which I know they did 50 something of them for the 50th, which is the first time in a while we've had that many new pennies. Um, so these are, first of all, these are the souvenir medallion books from uh, Tokyo Disney Resort. This is what, at least, I mean, they have several designs available at a time. They're so popular that literally new medallion books came out while I was there and I didn't buy them the first second I saw them and they actually sold out. Um, so people really like the medallions there. I've waited in line to do pressed medallions at, at, at the parks there. Like a decent sized line of people. Um, and I won't go, I'm not gonna go through all these coins, but I did fill, I filled two books last trip in August. And there were no, there wasn't a new book for me to buy this time, so I didn't, I, I probably, probably got like 30 or 40 new coins this time, but every seasonal event gets a bunch. They change them all the time. Every month there's like a, a coin of the month at several different machines. I also got a bunch of USJ ones last time. They seem to go through designs less quickly. I did get some Christmas ones last trip, but yeah. Can badges, we got Mickey's Happy birthday 2022 to Mickey. Also, this was, I thought this was the cutest thing. We'll go to this side. Uh, this is a Mickey birthday card shaped like a stick with the hat so you can wear the hat. It's a birthday card though, and it comes with an envelope. Happy birthday, Mickey Mouse. I guess you could send a birthday card to Mickey. He doesn't have an address though, so. Um, even though this is supposed to be for Mickey's birthday, I guess you can send a birthday greeting to someone else. Which, well, let's not read into that too much, I guess. Badges. You know I love my country bears, having saved them in Florida. Uh, so this is uh, his baby Oscar as a pencil case with his little, his little plush, his little stuff bear. Um, so he's a pencil case, so you can unzip the back and you can store, I mean, you can store other stuff too, but he's really, he's genuinely a pencil case. Uh, but what I, the detail I love the most is that while he is your pencil case, he has some storage, hidden storage of his own in his teddy bear, there's a little pouch that is the Tokyo Disney difference right there, man. How cute. This uh, is a Christmas item from this year. This is a legit sign in American Waterfront they put up for Christmas. Let's look up, you're under mistletoe. They turned it into, they did a towel set and a keychain set. And I looked at both, I was like, I have to own one of them because it's again, it's a park sign turned into merchandise. And I thought this was the better representation of the sign, so I bought that one. Okay. All right, we are getting towards the end of this batch. See how much time we have to do other things. It's almost file folder time. I know that's Jake's favorite. Jake's a big fan of file folder time. Well, there's a bunch of small stuff in here. This might take a while. I'm just gonna pile stuff up here. It's all the small stuff that settled at the bottom of the bag. And ceramics. Okay. I don't even know where to begin. Let's start with whatever's in this bag, I guess. This is a fabric button for Western land with Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Pretty interesting. What is, oh, these are, they wrapped pins. So uh, here's some pins I did not have. They, they just came out with a new Splash Mountain Open Edition pin with Chip and Dale and a Space Mountain pin with Mickey. Recent years, so got those. at the Japan Disney store. I'm not the biggest Powerline guy. We might put this in the auction, actually. I think that might be even why I bought this. Um, this is a Goofy and Max Powerline World Tour pin set from the Japan Disney store. I think we should put this in the auction, probably. I think you guys 
might want this more than I do. Um, and I'm thinking back, I think that's why, I think I bought this specifically for the auction. Um, so yeah, that's, that's gonna go in the auction. Gotcha Pond, vending machines where you could buy weird mystery toys. There was like poo meme keychains and I felt the need. I was trying to get the one, they had one of the, the antler butt, right? Which is like my favorite poo thing when he gets stuck in rabbit's window. And I tried to get the antler butt one, but I couldn't. Uh, here's a cute pin set of uh, Rex and Buzz under the cones, again with the monorail in the background, and they're sort of sculpted pins, they're dimensional. Really neat. Here is a button of uh, sort of 80s style plastic button of the Aquatopia with Mickey and Minnie riding it. Aquatopia, Disney Sea. Here is a Disney store pin of the three caballeros where you can move their hats back and forth. Look at those three happy chappies. We've got this amazing Pirates of the Caribbean pin. It's jeweled and it has Donald, Goofy and Mickey as pirates. Here is a weird Jose Carioca only keychain. It was for Jose Carioca's birthday at the Japan Disney Store. I do love the Caballeros, a big Caballero guy. Here is the Happiness Everywhere logo pin with Tinkerbell in the castle. They did a pin of that. Here is a magnet for the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel. Rubber magnet, Mickey and Minnie. I uh, have this light up hitchhiking ghost pendant, whatever you want to call it, from Tokyo Disneyland. It has the, the Haunted Mansion plaque. It lights up and has, uh, I think that's, uh, that's uh, Phineas. Phineas is that one with the, the Traveler. Tokyo Disneyland Hotel can badge, the button. Mickey and Minnie, that's a photo of them in the costume. Those costumes exist. They don't really come out, but they exist. Here is the Happy Birthday Mickey Mouse pin. Here is the Happy Birthday Mickey Mouse patch. Since I was there for Mickey's birthday, I felt compelled to buy the stuff. Mark the day. Uh, if you eat at the Center Street Coffee House, there is an exclusive item you can buy, this, this rubber uh, coaster with Mickey leaning on uh, sort of generic logo of the Center Street Coffee House, but I think it's cool that you, I mean, we ate there, so I was like, I feel like I should buy it since we ate there. It's, it was relative, it was almost nothing to add it on. And it's exclusive to the restaurant. These have a fun story. There are essentially Midway games. They're insanely themed and very nice looking Midway games at both Disneyland and Disney Sea. And if you lose the game, you pay to play. If you lose the games, you still get a prize, which typically could be like a pin or a charm. Um, for the holiday season, th these two pins were in the group of, of uh, loser gifts. Uh, one of them is Shrieky Utundu in a Santa hat and with a scarf from the Tower of Terror. Uh, and the other is one of the Sunbonnet, the Sunbonnet Trio Bears from the Jingle Bell Jamboree, the Country Bear Christmas Special at Tokyo Disneyland. And obviously I needed to own both of those desperately. All right, we got a lunch case for Holly Jolly Christmas. It's gonna be all that art we've already seen on a bunch of stuff. But I ate the gross sandwich. To say I ate the gross sandwich, I don't know why, I was in a weird mood that day. I tried the gross sandwich, I got the lunch bag. Re there's regrets, some regrets. All right, I don't think we're at file folder time yet. There's a couple of non-file folder things in this in this stack including this is a planner for the 21st anniversary of Disney Sea, again, themed to Arabian Coast. Oh, we're gonna have to go to this one. Themed Arabian Coast. So it's sort of like faux leather bound. It's got the gold art of Mickey and Minnie and Arabian Coast. There is a compass uh, on the back. Follow the compass of your heart, right? Uh, and the pages, you can't see it, but if we go to the super zoom, it shows you what the pages look like. The map from the Sinbad ride is present. It doesn't have all its detail, but it's there on the pages. 
are we on to file folder time? No, because this is, these are like, I guess these are tiny file folders, yeah. I think there's a couple of postcards have snuck in here. I don't want to ruin file folder time with weird things that have snuck into the group. Okay, here is a Critter Country postcard from uh, Tokyo Disneyland. We're just two very cute rabbits with carrots and corn. There's the back. Very cute. Kawaii. Uh, here is the happy birthday Mickey Mouse postcard. Uh, here is a, we got a resort line monorail ticket that's bent. Good job, Spencer. For Club Mouse Bee. You have to buy a ticket to ride the monorail there. Fun fact. Japanese regulation for transportation. So this is a Disney Resort Line 20th anniversary. I think it's gonna be a special monorail ticket, if I remember correctly. There's also a bag for this, but it's over there. Um, if you buy something at that Resort Line uh, window, they have a little merchandise bag that's themed to the Resort Line, their own special bag. Wow, this is super cool, okay. So you see the, the art on the front. So Tokyo Disney Resort line, uh, 20th anniversary, July 27th, 2021. It was built, of course, when they were building Xperia and Disney Sea and all that expanding the resort. Here's the back. But if you look on the inside, so there's the special monorail ticket. And then there's also a little sticker pad with all the monorails and the the, the uh, straps to hold on to and the 20th logo. This is this is fantastic. All right, I I am somewhat certain. Oh, these are postcards. Then we can move to file folder time. But uh, so they released while we were there for I don't even know what reason. Very late 80s, early 90s art style. Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Daisy stuff. This just spoke to me because this is when I grew up with Disney. So the characters looked like this on a lot of merchandise and stuff when I was a kid. Um, so it just, I don't know, it brought back a lot of good memories. Some sweet times, as it says on it. But we're going to see that art in larger form in a moment. But now it's time. It is time. Yeah, we'll do the file folders. It's file folder time. Here we go. So remember that calendar we went through in painstaking detail earlier? Here are 12 mini folders of all of that art. All 12 of them represented as tiny folders, envelopes kind of, but fo we call them folders for our, for our sake here. Do not believe the line there was to buy that ticket. That 20th anniversary monorail ticket at a line, I would wait in line for that, so I get it. I totally get it. Um, speaking of things I regret buying, this weird little stationary set for festive winter. Um, little Rin Rin, it's this Mickey that's shaped like a bell. So instead of little ring ring, it's a like little Rin Rin. He's got a scarf and I'm not a big fan. I know some people that are, I don't know. But um, I bought this again because there is uh, the Nautilus is somewhere on here. Yeah, uh, the Nautilus is a toy this time though. It's not just under the tree, it has wheels. That's the only reason I bought this. And now I'm stuck with it. <laughs> I don't regret it, there's a Nautilus on it. Okay, so here is the file folder version. I think we're gonna have to go over here now. Here's the file folder version of that 80s, 90s art. Um, so that's Mickey's, uh, that's Minnie's house in Toontown. It's the, it's the heart mirror. Uh, so the details are fun too, but I just, I don't know. The colors and the art, everything, it all spoke to me. Of course we had to get one, bought everything, right? Cause I'm clinically insane. Uh, here's the Mickey Mouse, happy birthday Mickey Mouse folder for 2022. Got this cute pattern on the back. What I like about the front is all the the 
the Mickey transportation is is represented. So you see the bus, the resort liner bus, the resort liner monorail. Then Disney Sea is in the background too with a whale for some reason. Whatever, it's cute. All right, uh, you may remember if you've watched older episodes of The Hall, you may remember the 38th anniversary of Disneyland, which was represented in a merchandise line that all celebrates just one store in Fantasyland, uh, which is my favorite store, mostly because it, it always has good stuff in it, but the art and the displays are just beautiful. And this is, it's all this art with the dragons and Minnie and Mickey. And there's this other little folder envelope in the back with like goofy coat of arms and all sorts of fun stuff. Really great. Let's do this one next. So this is an, this is, this is not a file folder. This is what uh, your photo on Splash Mountain would come in when you bought it at Tokyo Disneyland. So here's, I love this art so much. How beautiful is that? Can you open this up? And there's the back. All right, I saved the best file folder for last. This is a whole stationary pack themed to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in Western Land. So you saw this art before, this was on the button, uh, this Western Land art. And if we flip it over, you see there's a bunch of other really cool stuff here. Number one, there are those gold sticker seals with the BTM logo. Secondly, the back of the folder, it's hard to see here, has the whole backstory of Big Thunder Mountain written in English. Third, there's this really cute set of envelopes with Chip and Dale and Big Thunder Mountain. And last but not least, the possums on this like notepad over here. This is just the most incredible group of things in here. Just, oh, so good. So good. I got a couple more items here. Yeah. Uh, this is not an actual popcorn box. It's actually plastic. Um, but it's a Tomorrowland series. They did plates, too, and other stuff. Um, it's a Baymax slash Tomorrowland popcorn box. I mean, I don't know a lot of people make popcorn at home and then throw it in a, in a box like you're in a theme park. But it has the Happy Ride building on it, and Baymax is on it a couple times. And uh, the castle's on it. And Space Space Mountain, which is not going to exist in that form much longer, which is, I think, why I felt like buying. I just thought this was such a weird, interesting item that I was like, I should, I should get this. All right, let's unwrap these two things. Here's a Baymax. I think I have this. I think I bought this for someone and haven't given it to them. Um, but just in case, I'll show it anyway. The little Baymax beaker. Beaker? I'm sorry, I always get yelled at for using the wrong terms for these lab things. It's also a measuring cup, technically, but. Oh, so I actually have another, there's a different one of these. There are these weird, these weird drink glasses at Pirates of the Caribbean, which just have like photographs from the ride. I just thought this was so weird and interesting. It says Tokyo Disneyland. And there's a different one though. The other one I have has the dog with the keys. I think, or is it the is it the skeleton with the ship's wheel? I have to go look. I've already used the other glass. I think I had it on a show um, already. Um, but yeah, so I bought these. I just thought they were weird and interesting. So, there's a story behind this. Um, Tokyo Disney made a line of merchandise in anticipation of the return of the Duffy Show in Cape Cod. The Duffy Show in Cape Cod 
is an out-of-body experience where mostly a number of adults are forced to buy what I would call the least edible counter service meal at any Disney theme park on earth. And you have to buy a full meal because eventually they caught on that people were just buying like candy cases or tiny things so they can come sit and watch the Duffy show. So it's in Cape Cod cook off, you order your food, they sit you and then a show happens with plush, plush bears and cats and all sorts of creatures dancing on stage and saying things in a language you don't understand. Um, and it's all adults. There's not really many children, if any, present, but everyone's eating their inedible hamburger. Also, they could see Duffy sing for the 500th time. So again, they did a line of merchandise in anticipation of the return of the show, which didn't happen due to um, some COVID setbacks. It's also his 20th anniversary label. Um, so this is, I don't know, I just thought this was one of the highest quality plushes I've ever seen. Um, it, it's Mickey, he's holding Duffy, it represents him from the show. Uh, it's Duffy's Wonderful Voyage. Um, I didn't buy this originally because it was, I felt it was expensive. So before the yen was worthless, this is 7,200 yen. In olden times, this would be about 70 bucks for a plush. But the exchange rate was very much in our favor. And I just thought this was the cutest thing and it displays so well. And again, I'm doing my whole living room. This Disneyland and Disney Sea kind of divided in half. And I think there needs to be a Duffy representation. I didn't want to put a full size Duffy. I like this. It's Mickey in the costume with a Duffy that maybe is, is I don't know, more appropriate to his size. I, I, it's just very wholesome. It's a wholesome thing. It's Mickey and Duffy. And just look at the quality. I, I know this is a zoom and you may not see everything here, but I just want to show the quality of the Mickey and the Duffy, the face. It's just, it's it's a great looking plush. And I, I went back and forth about it. And then we did, I did like the math on my phone. I was, and then the, the exchange rate was at a point where I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna buy this. I like it. It's cute. I'm gonna get it. And I got it. And they, they're just both so soft and Mickey sits up so nice. I love them. I love them. I didn't understand the Duffy thing until I went to Japan. There is something somewhat, it's bizarre and wholesome at the same time. It's weird, but it's great. Um, and so there they are. Thank you.